we started in Athens, where Dave was obviously not doing well. And, and I didn't know what was wrong with him. He was cranky. He, he seemed tired. But, and he was having trouble keeping up. And it really wasn't a very hard day. It was such a light day that I came back to the ship and walked the perimeter of the ship in order to get enough steps in. And yet he was exhausted. By morning, it became obvious what the problem was. He had a nasty head cold. Our fear was that it was going to go down into his chest. Um, the next day was Santorini Island. It was windy and um, kind of, it is so windy that we had to tender and the tenders were um, delayed for 20 minutes and 30 minutes and they didn't get everybody on shore until around noon and we just gave up on it and didn't even leave the ship. It was bad. So the day after that was a sea day and Dave and I thought, okay, that'll work out. We'll take the day off, Santorini Island day off, and we'll have a sea day. And by then, he'll feel better. We had an antibiotic with us in case he had something that looked bacterial instead of something that was viral. But it never did get down in his chest. It was just all in his head. And we had cold medicine and all that kind of stuff. So things started looking a lot better. But the morning of the sea day, he woke up and he sa I said, how are you feeling? He said, well, I feel better as far as my head is concerned, but I have another problem. The other problem was a tooth. He was having not an excruciating toothache, but pain when he chewed on that tooth. And it was enough to give us a concern. So, we didn't quite know what to do. By this time, by the time I found out that he had this tooth problem, we had made arrangements for me to go into Pompeii on the Naples day with a ship's tour, and which is the only way Dave would let me off the ship without him. Um, the ship tours are guaranteed that they'll get you there and they'll get you back and they take care of you and they treat you like a moron and you know and um, he um, he just wasn't going to feel comfortable for me wandering around Naples by myself and trying to take a train to Pompeii and I don't really blame him it's kind of a gritty city but we had already arranged this I would paid for it everything then I find out he's got this tooth problem. So we went to the front desk and found out, first of all, that there is no dentist on board, which is something I kind of knew. But then they were wonderful. They made a ship-to-shore phone call on our behalf and made an appointment for him with a dentist in Naples for the following morning. Of course, what this meant was that I was going to go tripping off to um, Pompeii and to the Naples Archaeological Museum and a nice lunch while Dave went to the dentist, which is kind of shitty, but that's what we ended up doing. So, he, got, he went to the dentist, I went to my little excursion, he got back before I did, but not long before I did, a couple hours maybe. Um, the dentist, actually two dentists, now Grant, keep in mind, these guys came in to work on his tooth on a Saturday in a foreign country, and they popped, he had a crown on that tooth, and they popped the crown off, did a root canal, and then one of the guys worked on the crown and reshaped it slightly, I don't know what all the hell they did to it, and then put the crown back on, 
put him on an antibiotic and pain medicine, and he caught a cab back to the ship. And his tooth is fixed, and it cost a whopping 452 euros, which is about half of what it would have cost in the United States. So to say that we are delighted by the whole outcome is an understatement. Um, I, I just couldn't believe it. I was expecting, you know, a much bigger bill. But anyway, he's all fixed. So the public fountain here is like all the other public fountains. You can see these invitations, and sometimes they're bigger, which means that we're used by four people. This is one of the streets that is outside of the cafe. And people came here to drink. Men did it like this. Ladies did it. Ladies did it sitting down. Still now, the business of the member is not out of date. That's Vesuvius in the background. What is astonishing to me and to everyone else with me that day was that there are so many people living right in the nestled up close to that volcano. It's not a question of if it ever erupts again. It's simply a question of when. And I'm not sure how they would even evacuate that many people. It's several million that live right in the path of where that volcano would uh, erupt. I don't know how they would evacuate them. Uh, highways are just like our highways and I just swear to God I think imagine owning property there knowing that at some point it's going to be buried again these are all photos of taken at the um, archaeological museum I'm really sorry that you're having to deal here with my photos instead of Dave's because I, I'm not a good photographer. But he was busy at the time. At any rate, uh, these the, the artifacts there are fabulous. In many ways, the archaeological museum was more interesting than the site itself. Uh, our guide kept showing us places in Pompeii itself and there would be a whole bunch of people gathered around a spot and he would say okay he would say you can go over there and fight your way in to look at that flooring or that statue but I'm going to save you the trouble 
because I just want you to note where it is and let me tell you about it. And when we get to the archaeological museum, you can see the actual thing itself because the real one is there and what you see at Pompeii is a reproduction. And so that was really nice because we didn't bother with some of the, the um, stuff that just wasn't worth uh, fighting your way to see a fake floor. Um, there were some floors and uh, tiles and some painting wall paintings and stuff like that that were actual real and uh, he took us to those of course we didn't see as much of Pompeii as I would have liked I knew this would happen because it was an organized tour it was advertised as strenuous and yet we had two at least two people with us that couldn't could hardly walk and I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to come on this particular tour all they did was hold us back at at several points he arranged a place where they could sit down and we left them for a while and then came back and got them because they simply couldn't maneuver the the streets in Pompeii are um really uh, cobblestone-y and difficult to maneuver even if you're in good shape. It's really easy to, to get looking at stuff and stumble and fall. But at it, it was a fascinating day. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I would have enjoyed it more had Dave been able to come with me. And, had, and it would have been nice to have done it on our own. I, I had read an entire book about Pompeii. I had another book, a guidebook, downloaded into my phone with all kinds of stuff on it. So we could have done this on our own. But the outcome turned out fine in the end. So it was a good day. This statue, if it looks familiar, is very like Michelangelo's David. It's the first thing I noticed when I saw it. It is original to Pompeii, was taken from the ruins, but it's not the original statue itself. The original is Greek and was lost somewhere. This is a copy of one that was much older than that and this one dates at least back to 79 AD. Michelangelo got the inspiration for his David from antiquity. There's really just nothing new is there. Here the planet time. 